the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I who make their darkness bright, who In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather collectively for our Sunday worship in broadcast format. We gather as a community of faith which is somewhat fractured by this pandemic, more so for the Archdiocesan family of Glasgow, where we learnt of the sad news of the passing of His Grace the Archbishop, Philip Tartaglia. So as we gather for the Sunday worship, we pray that he receives before God a merciful judgment 
forgiveness of our sins he committed in human weakness and a kindly welcome into God's kingdom. We are also mindful of everyone who mourns at this time, whether they be people who hold high public or religious office or to those who leave, lead, lead the most simplest of lives. Because at the heart of every story, there is a family, there's a human heart, there's a human soul. And to all of those, and to ourselves, we raise our thoughts, minds and voices to God. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily Holy Mass, let us acknowledge our sins. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now take this opportunity to listen to the Word of God and be nourished by it. A reading from the prophet Samuel. Samuel was lying in the sanctuary of the Lord, where the ark of God was, when the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. He answered, Here I am. Then he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Once again the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, since you called me. He replied, I did not call you, my son. Go back and lie down. Samuel had as yet no knowledge of the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. Once again the Lord called the third time. He got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, since you called me. Eli then understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy, and he said to Samuel, Go and lie down. And if someone calls, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord then came and stood by, calling as he had done before. Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, and let no word of his fall to the ground. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me, he heard my cry. He put a new song in my mouth, praise of our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law in the depth of my heart. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. The second reading is a reading from St. Paul in the first letter to the Corinthians. The body is not meant for fornication. It is for the Lord and the Lord for the body. God, who raised the Lord from the dead, will by his power raise us up too. You know, surely, that your bodies are members making up the body of Christ. Do you think I can take parts of Christ's body and join them to the body of a prostitute? Never. But anyone who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Keep away from fornication. 
All the other sins are committed outside the body, but to fornicate is to sin against your own body. Your body, you know, is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you since you received him from God. You are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why you should use your body for the glory of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As John stood there with two of his disciples, Jesus passed. And Jesus stared hard at him and looked at him. Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where do you live? Come and see, was his reply. So they went and saw where he lived and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of those two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the words of this Holy Gospel, Wipe away our sins. Nothing speaks greater when we lose a loved one than perhaps the symbol of an empty chair. When we lose someone who's dear to us, their place at the table, their favourite chair in the sitting room, their pair of slippers, the vacancy is often summed up when they are not where we normally find them. The last time the Archdiocese of Glasgow lost a bishop was at the death almost 20 years ago of Cardinal Winnie. The symbol of his empty cathedra or bishop's throne in the cathedral spoke powerfully about the place the shepherd takes amongst his flock. This is not the bishop's cathedra. In fact, this chair was sculpted in honour of Duncan Patterson, one of our parishioners, by 
Neil Reed, who was a marble mason, and he sculpted this chair for Pope Benedict's visit to Bella Houston in 2010. It now serves as the presidential chair in St Mary's, where every Sunday a priest would take his place to lead and guide the flock. We'll probably be robbed of that powerful symbolism of Archbishop Tertullius passing because we can't access our churches and our place of worship. But whether we occupy a chair, an office like Archbishop, or indeed we simply quiet look about our business, the, the same question is asked of us as was asked of the disciples by Jesus. What are you looking for? The disciples who were John's disciples followed Jesus because they were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for the Lord. Unfortunately, one of my wee cats is taken ill. And first thing this morning, I had to take him to his vet. And on my way back from the vet, there was a local church hall of another parish, and it had been turned into a vaccination centre. It caught my attention because I saw people going into the chapel hall, but here it was a vaccination centre for COVID jabs. And it was like a scene from Cocoon. Do you know that film where the old pensioners are rejuvenated in mysterious waters? But there was lots of over 80-year-olds. Zimmers, walking sticks, some able-bodied that I hope they asked for their ID when they came in for their jag in the same way they asked for your ID when you're a young one with a, a bottle of wine. I'd want to make sure they're offering a proof of ID before they get their vaccination to guarantee because some of them looked well under 80 to me. But the joy was palpable in these people. Probably many of whom had not been out in months. And you could see the joy in their faces because they had seen or found some light at the end of the tunnel. When we have found faith, we have found the Lord that same joy, that same sense of freedom and liberation should be ours as well. Jesus did not promise his disciples an easy life. In fact, we you know in John's Gospel, chapter 16, he tells them, the world hated me and it will hate you. He doesn't promise an easy life as so many of our parishioners in this time of pandemic will have realised, come to realise. But he does offer life, and he offers life to the full. There is a bit of light at the end of the tunnel in these tiring months of, please God, the end of this pandemic. But we should let that inner joy of having come to know and found the Lord permeate our hearts. We need to pray for a new shepherd for Glasgow. We pray that he is like Simon Peter in today's gospel and he becomes a rock, a foundation for our faith. Archbishop Tertalia died in the feast of St Mungo, the patron and first bishop of our city. Perhaps in a small and quiet way it reassures us that Lord is in charge of his church. He's the supreme shepherd. And we ask him to send a new shepherd to his flock and to give rest to Philip forever. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters with the whole church throughout the world, let us profess our Catholic and universal faith. Having professed our faith in the Lord, let us turn to him, praying for our needs and the needs of the whole church. 
for the whole Christian people, let us beseech the abundance of divine goodness. Christ, hear us. For all who do not yet believe, let us implore the giver of all spiritual gifts. Christ, hear us. For those who hold public office, let us call upon the power of the Lord. Christ, hear us. For the whole community who cannot be present at this sacred assembly for an end to this pandemic, let us beseech him who observes all things. Christ, hear us. Pray for all those who are suffering or who are sick. Remember especially the intercessions and tensions of Jean Crombie and Senior Smith and Anne Ventise. We also pray for those who have died recently. Pray especially for Susan O'Neill, Jacqueline de Prato Dodd, and we pray for the anniversaries of Helen Sharp and Margaret Macaulay. We remember also, as prayed for early, the repose of our Archbishop's soul. May the Lord grant them peace and rest. Christ, hear us. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask you, O Lord, and listen to in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you through Christ our Lord. Having listened to the word of God, let us now approach him on the table of the Eucharist. My sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through the Paschal mystery he accomplished the marvellous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all the holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, full, uh, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
at the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. One breath, one body
let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, you may notice the Christmas trees are still up. For those of you who are accustomed to the Calton, you'll know that I observe what has the old tradition of keeping Christmas alive until the 2nd of February, the feast of the presentation of the Lord, and 40 days after his birth, Jesus was presented in the temple. Every year, one of the neighbours phones me over and says, I'm not of your faith, Father, but if you need help taking down your Christmas tree, I'll come over and help you. Well, she's not phoned this year because we Nicholas banned her from coming into my house anyway, even if she wanted to. But that said, um, maybe the lights of the decorations serve as a constant reminder of that foundation of faith, the gift of the Christ child that brings life at Bethlehem. It might also have something to do with the fact that our volunteers can't come in to help me, so Santa's little helpers are not about to help, so happy folk. Hope you're staying well, staying safe, and in these few remaining months that you, you don't flag too much. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and those dear to you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.